The way we did this is we recruited healthy normal volunteers to undergo two different exposures that were, that were done in randomized sequence. One of those exposures was to clean filtered air, which was kind of like a placebo, and the other exposure was to the 0 0.06 part per million ozone. This level of ozone is important because it is below the current national ambient air quality standard, yet still seen frequently enough, and we were worried about uh, knowing if that level of ozone could cause irritation and, and health effects. Uh, during the exposure, lung function testing was done, and the next morning, people came back and they gave us a sputum sample, which is they did a they coached coughing maneuver. The material that they coughed up, we were able to analyze and determine whether or not there was ear increased inflammation in the airways after the ozone exposure. There are a number of factors that influence who's going to be affected by ozone. Uh, we believe that genetics probably plays a role and we are certainly uh, conducting studies to see which uh, genetic factors will increase responsiveness to ozone. Uh, but on a practical basis, uh, the degree of exposure a person has is a very important aspect of response to ozone. Uh, ozone dosing is basically a function of how much ozone you're exposed to, that's the level that's in the air, how long you're exposed to it, that's how long you're outdoors, and how much you're breathing. So that's a, that's a, it, that's a function of what your exercise level is. So imagine if you uh, do are in the building construction business and you're actually one of the people building the house and it's you know, you're during the building season which is oftentimes in the summer and you're going to work throughout the you know, as much during the sunlight as you can because that's a good time to build well it, that's also a good time to be exposed to ozone so if you're working you know working hard you're breathing heavily and you're doing physical work outdoors for a prolonged period of time uh, your risk for having a, a, an ozone event is probably higher than a person who's doing fairly sedentary indoor work. I have really mixed feelings about that because we, we need more exercise and I think people should be able to spend more time outside. I think on a case-by-case -case basis if you if your child has exceptionally difficult asthma or seems to have exceptional difficulty during this time of the year is worth talking with your physician and, and asking the question whether this could come up. But ironically uh, one of the biggest mistakes that or, or, or confusions that occur is people thinking that their child's breathlessness is a function of ozone or asthma when in fact it's a function of being poorly conditioned and what they probably need to do is is do more exercise. So I think it's a very individual decision. What's important in making that individual decision is understanding that ozone can have these effects. Mm -hmm.